Father, we thank you. We give all the glory. We have come to live at the place of your faith and to understand the value of human soul. Therefore, the reason for the call of your disciple, the reason for bringing us to your prayer to work, shall not be a waste of heavenly resources. In the name of Jesus, therefore, everyone under the sound of my voice, I pray that the Lord will make every one of us to maximize the reason for our call to understand the value of our soul and therefore the home, the eternal home you have presented for the same from the beginning. All of us we shall inherit it. Every one of us we shall qualify and make it to the kingdom. And so shall it be. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we have prayed. We want to shed light upon this topic understanding the value of human soul understanding the value of human soul bible speaking in book of genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 and the lord god formed man out of the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nursery and the bread of life and man became a living soul so man became a living soul by the bread of life man was made from the dust and therefore the dust itself has no life in it until when God breathed into it therefore the soul of man began to exist from the beginning with which man breathed into the dust and we became a living soul so having established about uh, the all sufficient grace of God having understood the all benevolence grace of God that he has given unto believers having understand that God is merciful he is mighty he is always there for his children therefore we need to understand as well that God does not like to leave man to be on his own he always desire a relationship with man he always desire relationship with man and therefore he does not want anyone to perish no wonder in the book of jeremiah chapter 1 and from verse 8 to 10 and paraphrase and god said unto jeremiah saying be not afraid of their faces for i am with thee to deliver a then or today so see see at uh, this day send thee over the nation and over the kingdom to do that to do what to pull down to root out to destroy and to build and to plant so god he ordained us his children to be able to perform this work of this Jeremiah chapter 1 8 to 10 he has set us this day to do what to destroy to pull down to root out and to plan and to build so that so that are outside there perishing we will be able to bring them back to the kingdom if we can take cognizance of what is going about in the world how many souls have been lost to pandemic how many souls have been lost to banditry how many souls have been lost to armed robbery how many souls have been lost to various sickness uncountable sickness and disease take a look at what is happening in general hospitals you will see many souls on daily basis going Therefore, you will have this passion that where are these souls? Where are they going? What is their state of transition? Because it is established that man is not just ordinary. There is another life for man. When you leave this world, it does not mean it is the end. The journey continues. The journey continues. And it is my father prayer that everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice still living upon the face of the planet earth today shall not miss the reason of God keeping them alive shall not miss the reason of God uh, making their soul to exist today so that at the end their soul shall be kept blessed before they return to the new life 
and so shall it be in the name of Jesus. So what are the importance of soul winning? Let's go there. What are the importance of soul winning? We said that in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, and the Lord God from man out of the dust of the ground, and he bred, he bred into his nursery, and the bread of life, and man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. So we find that in the book of First uh, John chapter uh, five verse twelve, they don't make it to uh, clear for everyone that he that have the son have life, and he that have not the son have no life. Life of God that was spread into man was to uh, bring man from. Uh, the state of decadence, from the state of decay, from the state of failure, and to bring the life of God inside us. But we must understand that the soul of man is the primary place of abode of God in the life of man. The soul of man is the primary place. Yeah, that is, it is the place where God lives inside us. That is why soul of man is so precious in the sight of God. Soul of man is so precious in the sight of God. Put together the whole wealth of this whole world is not as important as the soul of man that is saved into the kingdom. Put together anything you treasure, anything you value, anything you place so much importance about this world is not as important as soul of man that repented and all that make it to the kingdom of heaven. So we find that the importance of soul winning is very, very enormous because many, they are tired of situation and circumstances of this life. Many are saying that life is not fair. Life is not fair. See all the things I've been passing through this and that, and because of that, they say in their heart there is no God. Therefore, it is better they should not serve any God. Let them commit suicide. Let them uh, do this. Let them do that. But you need to rescue them from the social. There is a time limit given to man that he can survive when he falls into deep water. There is a time limit. If no one rescues this person, there is a time limit that a, a man will survive when you throw him into a dry pit where there is no water. There is a time limit if he does not have any water will bring him out of the dry pit. There is a time limit with which a man that God fainted and when he fainted, he does not want his God anyone that will resuscitate him or that will give him first aid to uh, be able to bring him to life according to studies that four minutes Four minutes, not more than four minutes, a person that God painted will not be able to get beyond it before it will pass on. That is why there is a matter of urgency because there is no more time. Devil, on his part, is doing everything possible. He is doing everything possible to make sure that he gets as many so as possible onto his kingdom. Even the one that stands, let him take it so that he will not fall. I see everyone under the sound of my voice, both the one that are discouraged about God, both the one that are in the valley of indecision. For right now, God shall make them to have a genuine encounter with God, that they will believe in the almightiness power of God, and that they will know that it is by God they are living, and that their soul is not just ordinary. That God is living in their soul because at the end of everything, God will require of this soul from the man. Where is the soul I have given unto you? Where is the soul? It is that place of life that God has bred into man. That Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 that we read. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Remember, all things have passed away, and behold, all has become new. That is 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. 
So when you the Lord Jesus Christ breathes into you, you will become born again. That is when a new life enters inside you. A new life enters inside you when you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Remember, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath no life. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4 saying, Remember, all living souls belong unto God. The soul of he, the soul of the Father as well as the Son, it is the soul of he that sinneth that shall die. All living soul belong unto God. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son, but it is the soul of he that sinneth that shall die. We shall not die in the name of Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. So what is the value of human soul? The value of human soul is so enormous because the soul is so precious in the sight of God that he did what? He sent his only begotten son to die for us. To die for us. In relation that is John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish for how life everlasting. So, we find that the soul of man is the primary, is the primary and most important asset of God upon the planet Earth. His eye is watching to and fro upon the face of the earth. The eyes of God is watching right and left and to search for the soul of man and to see the one that loves God. The one that loves God is, is, is he that is a soul winner. You cannot say, I love God. Where is the evidence of the soul? Where is the evidence of the soul that you are bringing to heaven? And he said unto Simon, son of Judah, Simon, love it that be more than this. And Simon answered, Lord, you know I love you. And he answered, he, he asked the same question, Simon, son of Judah, do you not love me more than this? And he said, Master, you know, I, and why he asked for the daughter, Simon was troubled, he was troubled in his spirit. And Jesus said this to me, if you love me, take care of my sheep. If you love me, feed my lamb. Feed my lamb. So, the uh, care that you have for the main property of God on earth, which is human soul, is what qualifies you to be a God lover. Look at Solomon. Solomon loved God. His uh, love the Lord is God. That he followed the status of David his father. And not only that, he offered a thousand points on the hill. So he was a victor's soul and lover. That when God asked him, young man, what would you that I should do for you? And because he is a soul lover, he said, Oh Lord, how will I need this great multitude of people like the sons of the seashore? I am a, just a, 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 a little young boy. I do not have wisdom. I do not have the understanding to know when to come in and to know when to go out. And the Lord do have upon him this young man said, Oh, you did not ask for silver. You did not ask for gold. You don't ask for the head of your enemy. You are a soul lover. Therefore, I give you an open check that whatever you desire, you will get it. You get it. In riches, you get riches. In long life, you get it. You will get honor. You will get wisdom. You will. God gave him everything that he never imagined because the value that God placed on human soul is so, so, so enormous. It is so great. Is so great that is why we have that great importance to this very very subject. So there are some important points to be able to know about the value of the human soul. What are the important points to know for the value of the human soul? Number one, the value of soul is priceless. What can a man give in essence of his soul? Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. And what shall a man gain? And eh? if he gain this old one and loses his soul in hell fire, or what shall a man give in exchange? Okay, so Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26. It is it, it, it is worthless. 
in a mansion, gave the whole world, but at the end, he lost everything in hell. Number two, the human soul is God in man. The human soul is God in man. That is the place where God lives inside you. You will not say there is no God inside you. You will not understand that many a time you see yourself uh, 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 being directed by God. You see yourself being uh, spoken to and say something tell me that I should do so so things. Remember, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So when God wants to bless you, for example, He bless your spirit. For example, if you are a good man and you always do good, if you are a man that is always mindful of your relationship with your God, then God blesses you. And uh, human beings also say God will bless this man. God will bless this man. What is God blessing? Inside you is your soul. Your soul is blessed. Your soul is blessed. Remember, God has created all things all for his own pleasure. And they were all created. Say, thou art what? Thou are what O Lord, O Lord, to receive glory. The pleasure is the soul of man that he lives inside us. And when you make the soul to grief, when you wrong God by your disobedience, when you wrong God because of your Adamic nature, God is wrong, he is angry. And that is why he warns us we should not continue in sin and make the angels of God assigned to you to be angry. I made the angel, the security angel that he assigned to you, and we put your continual sin, make him to, to stay away, make him to hands off his hand from your mother. He makes it because he God, he lives in your soul. That is the place that he lives. Remember, Jesus made the people of his time to understand when he's telling them that I'll put out I'll, I'll put down this temple and in three days. He as I say, destroy this temple. Destroy this temple in three days time, I will build it up. He is telling them in very that the soul of man is the place where God lives. God does not live in building. God does not live in building that is constructed by human hands. He does not live in the building that is constructed by the human hand. Rather, your soul is the primary abode of God is the primary abode of God. That is why it said in that book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16. So for ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God. They shall be my people. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. Number three points. Number three, for me to stress on the importance of our soul. Number three, the soul of man will return to God and to answer for all that he has done on the earth. The soul will return back to give account of what he has done on earth. Luke chapter 12 and verse 20. Luke chapter 12 verse 20. Say, either, either be it good or evil. For God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, and then who shall those uh, things be when thou hast provided? Which shall those things be when thou hast provided? Imagine when this man has said, and uh, you say, I will build a big barn, and I will store so many treasures in this, you know, in this uh, treasure, I mean, this uh, barn. I will keep many things that we use for many years in it, and I will say to my soul, eat, drink, take life easy. Uh, 
He will check his uh, medical record very well and to stay in health. And he will say to his soul, enjoy, for you have you have stored so many things that you enjoyed for many years. But God, he did not have agenda of God in any of this matter. There is no any place that he said, God, this is the new version. I want to serve you. I know I've been serving you all this while, but now I want to intensify my uh, energy on how I can get more soul saved to your kingdom. He doesn't have. He only thought he want to enjoy what is of earth. The first step of heaven said, Today will I require of your soul from thee. With whom shall all these things that is taught here, with whom shall it be? It is a waste of resources. Number four, only God has power over soul. Only God in heaven has power over soul. That was in the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Only God has power over soul. Only God has power over soul. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him that is able to destroy both the body and the soul in her. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. So God has power over soul to destroy it or to save it. The primary business of Jesus when he was on earth here is for so many. And why he told that woman that was caught in adultery and that people raised up the stone to stone her and said to this woman and said to her, Depart, go and say no more. I have not condemned you. I have not condemned you. I have not condemned you. Where are your accusers? Woman, woman, where are your accusers? I myself, I have not condemned you. Or depart, go and say no more. So we find again that number we find again that number uh, five of it that every soul is important to God. Every soul is important unto God. Luke chapter 15, verse 7. He said, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over ninety and nine just person which have no repentance. Luke chapter 15, verse 7. So, there is joy in heaven over one soul that repented. There is joy in heaven over one soul that repented. More than 99 people that have no name of repentance. That is why prayers, intercession prayer, has to be on the rise. The prayer of that fire has to be rekindled to be able to Pray for souls that are perishing, souls that are discouraged, souls that are already, uh, you know, casting uh, their confidence away from God. To be able to bring them back, it's only prayers that can bring them. Anyone that is engaging in this business of in, uh, intercession prayer, anyone that is involved in this prayer of getting soul back to the kingdom, is doing a great thing for his soul. And that is why a person cannot miss his reward. We shall not miss our reward of our still worship in this kingdom. In the name of Jesus. So, the conclusion of this matter is that we see the human soul from the eyes of God that we are, I mean, we are precious. If we can look at how God looks at the soul of man, we will find that we will more be in a more haste, even more than we are now. If we see the primary importance, how God is waiting, because there's no more time, the master shall come at any time. And when he shall come, he shall gather the wheat, and he shall separate them from the shaft. The shaft will know that he shall burn them with a punchable fire. So, the Lord is interested in gathering as many souls as possible unto his kingdom and he wants to use you and i as the ambassador of the kingdom to be able to do this work to be able to do this work and the reward is unmatchable the reward is unmatchable the reward of so many is unmatchable put together all the work of this world is not as important as the uh, 
and you go out that is attached to so many. So, we must remember to hold fast to this truth of the, of the scripture. The truth of the scripture is that he has sent us to go into all the world and to preach the good news unto all the nations and that we should be able to rescue them from the dominion of darkness into the dominion of the world. As we are doing this, the Lord will multiply His grace in our life, both upon this earth, and we shall have our name written in the book of life when we are doing this job. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.